After the barefoot hiking boot video, I was really shocked at how many of these brands are using fake leather or no leather at all for an application like hiking where leather really performs better than almost any other material, and I'd argue better than any material. And none of them were really built in a traditional way, they're all cemented together. And so after that video, the comment section was completely flooded with recommendations and asking us to cut apart the barefoot, barefoot boots. And so I reached out to barefoot and was like, hey, you wanna throw your hat in the ring? They said yes, so let's cut this thing in half, run it through a test and really see if this is an actual durable barefoot boot. And thanks to Barefoot for sponsoring this video. And let's start going through the details, starting with the leather first, because leather is one of the most durable and versatile materials that you can make footwear out of. And I'd also argue that it's one of the most natural materials you could make footwear out of. And it's better for the environment than all the synthetic plastic based boots and shoes that we've seen recently. So why do none of these barefoot boot companies make their products out of real leather. Well, there seems to be a really common trend with barefoot brands with this like eco-friendly, vegan, granola type consumer, which there's nothing wrong with, you know, if that's your thing, there's no, it's not a big deal. I understand not wanting to wear a, a dead animal around your foot, but not every single one of the barefoot brands is that way. And Barefoot is a unique brand amongst all these other brands because they value a lot of the same things where they, they really value su the sustainability, returning to nature, but they also see the value in being a part of nature instead of being apart from nature, which seems to be how a lot of these other barefoot brands view their footwear. So what's the deal with the leather? Well, this leather is two to 2.5 millimeters thick. So right around what we see with the heritage work boot world. And the type of leather that this is, is a buffed or new buck full grain leather where they essentially take that cross section of leather and they sand down the very top portion of it which gives it that kind of matte microfiber texture. And then they also put a little light layer of wax on top. And that does a few things. It makes it slightly more water resistant. It gives it that matte finish. It also hides imperfection caused by bug bites, barbed wire scars, branding scars, because they're just removing the very top surface, which can hide a lot of those flaws. But sometimes when they're making this leather, they get a little heavy handed on the sanding and they completely remove all that grain, if not just a little bit of sliver left in there. So we took our macro lens, put it on the cross section. And as you can see, this leather has not been over sanded. There's still plenty of that structural grain pattern in there. Next, if we look at the lining, you can see it's partially lined in the shaft and then it's fully lined in the vamp, which is exactly what you expect from a more heritage style made boot. And the lining is a pretty decent leather. And that's one thing about having products made in Mexico. Mexico makes really good leather for an affordable price and they make really good boots and shoes. But more importantly, they actually have a dedicated leather counter cover on the inside, which is shockingly rare for a boot of this price point. And then if we look at the insole, so it's a kind of an interesting insole because it's not removable and it's leather topped foam with a little bit of edge binding around it, which I thought was kind of odd. I don't really understand why they did that because to me, that would just cause a potential high pressure point on your big toe and your pinky toe if, you, if you're standing on that all day. So maybe there's something with the internal structure that, that they have to do that. So we'll see we get it cut in half. But more importantly, if you slightly peel away that insole, you'll see oh, a beautiful veg tan leather insole. Finally, one of these boots has some decent materials throughout the sole construction. Veg tan leather is, is basically the industry standard for a high quality material insole because it's super durable, it's flexible, it absorbs your sweat, it's breathable, it doesn't mold, and it doesn't stink nearly as fast as synthetic materials. And so that's why you see in these $600 boots, why they all have veg tan leather insoles. You'll notice there's a little teeny Blake stitch on the inside, which is a little bit confusing because I just assumed this was a Goodyear welted boot because you can see the Goodyear welt on the outside here. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know if you could make this boot a Goodyear welted boot because the way that that creates a void on the inside, would run really counter to what you're trying to do with a barefoot boot. It would just add a lot of bulk, a lot of unnecessary materials, ruin the flexibility. And so I'm gonna guess that this is a fake Goodyear welt, probably a Blake stitch. It, maybe it's not quite as durable as a stitch down in Goodyear welted construction. It is still a sewn construction. So you have the cement and that stitching that you have to break through to get the shoe to delaminate. But there are some advantages to a Blake stitch that these other styles of constructions don't have. There's no visible stitching on the outside that you could potentially wear through or accidentally cut through or braid through. It's a very slim and water resistant and protected construction style. I don't love the fact that there's a fake Goodyear welt if it is fake. But I kind of get it if you want the rugged look and you want the visible stitching on the outside But you want the slim silhouette and the slim fill underfoot You kind of have to have the Blake stitch But the most important thing about this whole construction is that these are actually resolable and not that any of these brands Don't have resold services But a lot of them you have to ship the shoe back in and you have to pay a premium to have them resold Which is really awesome, but also a lot of them don't have a resold service So you spend 200 bucks on a boot with a really thin outsole with not leather materials and, and synthetics all the way through 
through and then you wear it out in nine months and then somehow that's more eco-friendly than a leather boot that's resolable. Say you wear through this outsole, you can take this to any local cobbler and all they do is peel this outsole off and glue a new one on. This is a really uniquely designed boot because you'll notice here they have these little flex cutouts that eliminate that bite at the top of your foot. It looks like it has a toe cap. It has some unique paneling. The eyelets are really interesting. The way that they gusset this tongue is they puncture through both sides of the upper and fold it over to create the eyelets, which I assume would make it a little bit more durable. It might sacrifice some of the water resistance. And even like this little split at the back so you don't get that high pressure point at your calf. You can tell a lot of thought went into designing this boot. So now let's cut them in half. All right, we got it cut in half, so let's see what's inside. So is it a true toe cap? No, it is not, but at least it is that really thick leather. I guess to be fair, like these already are ridiculously wide. So with another, another layer of leather on top would make them even wider. Is it a real Goodyear welt? No, it is not. That is a fake Goodyear welt. But like I mentioned, it, it does make sense with what they're trying to do with this boot. And now that we can see on the inside, we know that this is a true Blake stitch construction binding and sewing together that insole, the upper and the midsole together. And how thick is that veg tan leather insole? It's only about one millimeter thick, so not nearly as thick as what we see in some of the, the real work boots. These boots need to be flexible. People like the agility of it, and so, Ideally, it'd be thicker, but at least there is a veg tan leather insole. So is this a true durable barefoot boot that you could actually rely on that's built traditionally, that's made of high quality materials? Yes, it is. You know, and there is room for improvement. I'm not saying this is a perfect boot by any means, but it's $240 and you get a lot for $240, especially from a small company, small batch with high quality materials and a decent construction. So the pros of this boot really are the, the, the good leather, basically through the entire construction. You have a really good lining material. You have a true dedicated counter cover on the inside and you have about 16 or 17 millimeters of material protecting you from the ground. You still get the, the flexibility, you still get the barefoot feel, the zero drop, the wide toe box, but you're not going to be wearing your feet out anytime you want to go walk around in these. But that is also a con, not quite as flexible because the leather upper is a little bit stiffer. It's not quite as breathable. It's a little bit less ground feel underfoot. But all things considered, I think this is a pretty impressive boot. Because if you compare it to like a Thoroughgood, it has just as good as leather as the Thoroughgood. It has a similar construction with the similar materials, but has real veg tan on the inside. They both have a fake welt. One's real, one's not. One's Blake Stitch, one's Goodyear welt. But if we use that as kind of our price ruler, if you put it side by side for a more affordable boot, it's pretty easy to see how I came to the conclusion that these are worth the price. So this boot really is interesting in a, in a very niche market where everyone seems to be doing the exact same things. Barefoot's doing it completely different with a different ethos, with a different perspective, and they're making a true high quality barefoot boot. So check out Barefoot via links in the description. And thank you guys for supporting this channel and this series. It means a lot to me, so thank you. See ya.